In the absence of big bulky lymph nodes or their good counts are low, people are monitored. Now, this is that period that they call watch and wait, or many of our patients call watch and worry. And, and the reason for that, even though it's, it's a tough, I think it's tough for our patients, and I always say to somebody who's newly diagnosed, that that first year of the diagnosis and knowing you have a blood disorder, blood cancer, CLL, you're, you're stressed, you have good days and bad days. And it takes about a year, year and a half in my experience in my clinic with my patients to, for them to kind of get what they have and be comfortable with the fact that they're living with a disease they're just not treating right now. And so I liken it to other chronic diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease. They're just actively getting medications for their problems. We're just not actively treating your leukemia right now. And for very good reason. Um, I know patients, you know, of course you get a diagnosis of cancer and so the goal is get it out, get it gone, be done. Because we don't have cures yet for CLL, if we start therapies, and originally, years ago, when we started traditional sort of chemoimmunotherapy drugs, we'd give a lot of side effects to patients and they didn't benefit them in the long term. If you don't need it, don't ask for it. So if we can benefit you from having a, a free period of not needing some therapy that could give you potential side effects, and if you're the quarter of patients that never need to have treatment, so be it. Of course, I wish I could reassure that patient and do a blood test and knew that that patient would never need treatment and they can go on and never come to my clinic again. But until we actually have that and understand the biology better, we don't. So if you don't need therapy and you don't, there's a re reason not to have therapy, it's getting everybody sort of adjusted to the fact that they're living with a new diagnosis and a new illness that just doesn't need to be treated yet. And so that, that is psychologically very difficult initially, and it still plays, you know, I think it takes time for everybody to get comfortable with that. But if they keep in the mindset that there are a lot of other medical problems where they're getting active treatments for, and this is just one we just don't need treatment for, that they should benefit from that. In other words, that, uh, that period of, of not having anything is really beneficial, particularly as we're getting new drugs that may be better. And they may, and if they advance the disease or we find a drug that cures all and has little, little side effects, then that'll be different, right? So then as soon as somebody gets diagnosed, if we have everything that will cure everybody for CLL, that'd be a different issue. Everybody get treated sooner. So until that happens, that whole, you need to watch and wait and just be accustomed to learning about your body, infections, other things I teach my patients about initially, what to look at, good healthcare maintenance, screening for other cancers, calling us if they have developed any signs or symptoms of an infection. Those are the things I educate my folks about in the beginning as we sort of are just getting uh, more blood work from them to sort of help prognosticate them, and we could talk a little bit about that, um, to let them know a little bit about their biology, which may be different than someone else with CLL and then also how they can look at their life. And so I think that first initial period is, uh, is, uh, is tough for a patient, um, but tempo of their disease is more important until we know, as I said, until we have better treatments, monitoring their disease is very appropriate initially. Um, and that tells us also something about their biology. So the longer somebody's monitored and doesn't need treatment, they may be that quarter. And then I actually see those folks less frequently over the years.